we didn't get on too many ships. Uh, that are going no. That don't move us. My Lord. To destiny. Preach, bro. We get on a lot of ships. We walk into a fellowship. And we don't even like each other. My God. How are we going to get from one place to the next? We come into worship, but we don't really give God our all. How are we supposed to expect God to move us from one place to the next? The ship that you are in is a vehicle to your next place. Thank you, Jesus. And if that friendship isn't moving you, you on the wrong ship. You on the wrong ship. It's the wrong ship. Preach. Uh, it's the wrong it's the wrong ship here Paul warns this fields. He, he warns them he says listen I'm just a you ever been in a position where you know you're not the one in authority to say something but you know something's wrong he said I, 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 you keep your mouth closed you're a little reticent and he said I, I don't want to be the one to speak out he said I'm just a little prisoner I'm just a prisoner <laughs> I'm warning y'all. Illustrate, bro. A storm is coming. Uh, yeah. And this ship ain't gonna last. <laughs> Talk about it. Wow. He says, I'm not the one steering the ship. I'm not the sailor. I'm not the centurion that's watching over the prisoners. I'm one of the prisoners. I'm the least on the ship. But I'm just but, warning y'all. But this ship, this ship is not gonna last. My lord. Do you know the thing that broke the ship up? A storm. Oh, oh yes. Storms will break up ships in your yes, life yes, that you're not yes. supposed to be on. All right. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Storm. oh, Storms Lord. will tear apart ships that you weren't supposed Thank to be on. And you think it's a storm for you. No, the storm is to break the wrong ship. Wow. 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 This is so good. This ship ain't going to last. Look at somebody say, this ship ain't going to last. This ship ain't going to last. Watch your mouth. I know some of y'all used to cuss. Don't say it. Hey, this ship ain't going to last. If it's not progressing the body of Christ, we have to reconsider what we're doing. It's right, bro. Amen. It's right. Amen. It's right. If it's not navigating us to greater, we have to reconsider what we're doing on our ship. Yes. If we're not bringing souls in, we have to reconsider what our fellowship is doing. If we're not saving the lost, we have to reconsider what our worship is doing. If we're not building people, we have to reconsider what our stewardship is doing. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Paul warns them. He says... It's not going to last. Y'all can read the chapter when you get home. It says, it's not going to last. They decide to get on the ship and go anyway. <laughs> and they go to head towards Rome. And they find out, as the Bible would say, a tempestuous storm came and destroyed First ship. You'll find that the Bible lets them know, lets us know rather, that they then find another ship. But this ship was actually importing goods from Egypt. It's an African ship. And they get on this ship, and Paul still lets them know it's not gonna last because the storm is greater than the strength of this ship. Mm. Mm. Anytime your storm is bigger <coughs> than the ship, me. the ship is not going to last. But when your ship is greater than the storm, mm -hmm. the, see, the reason or the way, rather, you can tell when you're on the right <coughs> ship is when storms come, <coughs> does it fall apart? Okay, right, man. right. If it doesn't fall apart and it withstands the storm, you're on the right ship. Right ship. Lord have right. mercy. If your, if your ship does not break apart when tempestuous waves hit it, you're on the right ship. Thank you. And here, you get on another ship. Now watch this, y'all. I need you to catch this. What happens is they get on this ship, and even though this one ain't going to last either, the reason they got 
got on was selfish, let me tell you. The land that they were stranded on first, this land was a what we would call a rinky dink. It was it was it was nothing to do. It was it was a it was a a, a, a town uh, uh, and we 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 would say there was no fun, no activity. It didn't have a, a, any things to get engaged in, and they didn't know how long the storm would last. So they said, if we can't have fun while we're here, then we got to keep it pushing. Mm. Uh, you never want to move off of your flesh. See, because they were only moving because uh, the place they were in wasn't convenient. They were not concerned about the lives of those that could be lost uh, if they made this move. See, sometimes you have to be in an uncomfortable place because if you move out of time, lives can get lost. Mm. Right, right. And here, out of their convenience, the centurions... And and, 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 and and those that were sailing the ship out of their convenience of not wanting to be bored, they wanted to be entertained. They said, we cannot stay here. Let's keep it moving. Isn't it funny how people make decisions for your relationship? People make decisions for your, 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 your stewardship. People make decisions for you, not based on you. <laughs> They said, we can't stay here because this land is not conducive for us to chill, wow. to relax, to have fun until the storm passes. And since this Ricky Ding land is nothing to do, let's keep moving. Uh, how can people make decisions about your well-being for their convenience? Amen. Anytime you're on a ship or in a ship with people who only care about their convenience, Somebody said it's the wrong ship. It's the wrong ship. It's the wrong ship. <laughs> uh, here. My goodness. Here, they, Auntie, they make a convenient decision for self. And forget that people's lives could be lost. Yes. Yes. Uh, you cannot decide for others out of your convenience. Uh, amen. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me help you. You cannot give advice to someone that needs advice. Based on how you're going to benefit from their decision. Right. Wow, <laughs> it's true. I, 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 I know you might not be you might not be getting this, but 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 I you can. cannot make decisions for your convenience for somebody else's life. Right. Wow. Amen. And here they're making decisions for self when lives could be lost. But Paul, being an anointed man of God, mm -hmm. says. God came to me. He first told them to warn the people that they won't just lose stuff, but they'll also lose lives. That was the first one. That some lives would be lost, but they would also lose some stuff. <coughs> Meaning, when it started wavering and the storms came, if you read the text, the Bible says that they had to start throwing some of their stuff overboard yeah. to lighten the ship. So now they started losing things that belonged to them because they made a move that they should not have made. Amen. When you make moves that are not aligned with the plan of God for your life, you'll lose valuable possessions wow. Wow. outside yeah. of the will of God. Ask the prodigal son what he lost when he stepped outside of the will of God. He squandered what he wasn't supposed to have yet. My goodness. And they had to lose possessions. But then God comes to Paul. I'm almost done. He comes to Paul and gives him a second warning. This time, it was an admon admonition of faith. He tells him, even though a storm will come, I'm paraphrasing, that you will not lose any lives. So now you have people who didn't heed the first word of God still getting saved because of his mercy. Mm, Doesn't that God. sound familiar? Thank you. When we didn't heed the word of God in my our goodness, past, my we goodness. didn't listen to the warning of God in our past about people we connected with, about places we went, about stuff we did, and God in his omniscience and his sovereignty still managed to turn Thank you, Jesus. what we did Thank wrong you. to make it right, not Thank the actions. 
action, but he made us righteous in spite of what we did. You got people that are connected to you that the only reason they're still here is because God has favored them in your connection. Lord have mercy. These sailors and centurions with the exception of Julius, who was a close friend of Paul, the rest of the centurions who were watching over the prisoners, they were only favored because Paul was present. You gotta understand, some stuff don't happen because you're present. And it's not to make you arrogant, it's to help you understand that God is not gonna destroy when his precious possession is still there. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Yeah, the ship, second ship now, if you read it in detail, you can tell that Luke wrote it because Luke was a physician. And if you look at his, his style of writing, the way he wrote, he was very detailed just because of his study, just because of his background. If you read this, you would think somebody who knew how to sail ships wrote this because of the way he speaks about the anchors and the way he talks about how the northeasterly winds would move the ship this way. And if you really study how they knew the details of what would break apart in the ship and what would not stand in the ship, and it shows that it was inevitable to happen out of disobedience, yet they still end up getting saved. The Bible says that the soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners. But God just told Paul that no lives would be lost. When you are in the same ship as people who are saying the opposite of what God's plan is saying, it's the wrong ship. Yeah. When you are in the ship where people are speaking things that seem contrary to what you know God said. God said no lives will be lost, but their intention is to kill the prisoners. Aren't you glad that you've been in some ships, but it still couldn't kill you because God knew that he had a greater plan for you being there? Aren't you glad that you were in some stuff that could have killed others and it still didn't take y'all out just because you were present and God knew that he had to get you somewhere? Aren't you glad about destiny? Can you open your mouth and make some noise? Because sometimes destiny is what saves your life. When God has a will and a plan that man cannot destroy, it's not the storms that will take you out, but it's destiny that keeps you in. And God reminds us in this story. Thank you, Jesus. I got destiny called. So, you might intend to kill him and the rest of the prisoners, but because I'm God, I'm going to position him to where he can't be killed. Look what the Bible says. Verse 43, it says, But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, now this was one of the watchers of the prisoners, but this was, this was Julius, the one who grew fond of Paul. When, when Paul was imprisoned a couple of times, he was the centurion that had to watch over Paul, so he, he had a good relationship with him. Isn't it amazing that God sometimes favors you to make connections even with people who are assigned to do wrong? The centurions were assigned to bring these people who were not really guilty. Paul was not guilty of anything, but they were assigned to bring them to prison. They were assigned to bring them before Caesar so that he could stay in his case and then probably still be thrown in jail. But the Bible says that the centurion that wished to save Paul kept them from carrying out their plan. Sometimes you are connected in a or a fellowship with somebody who has the earthly authority to preserve you and to keep you so that other stuff don't hit you. Isn't it good to be connected? Isn't it good to be well connected? Isn't it good to have favor when you can walk in a place and they say, oh, that's my man. I'm going to hook you up. When you can walk in a dealership and they say, I remember you. You blessed my life. Let me help you.
you out. When you can walk into the bank and they say, I remember you because you have made good relationship with people around you. And because you've done good, I'm going to bless you. Sometimes your blessing comes through the hand of somebody you're connected to. And I came to remind you that God is pushing us into a season. Lord, have mercy. I hear you, Holy Ghost. He says, when men are going to begin giving into your bosom, press down, shake it together, and run it over. People are going to have plans to destroy your dream and your vision, and God is going to send somebody that's going to say, no, 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 no. You can't mess with them. You got to go through me to get to them. Can I rewind a little bit? Y'all remember Genesis when Joseph was going to be killed by his brothers, when Reuben stepped in and said, no, let's just spare his life and let's send him off to slavery. Aren't you glad that God puts a Julius sometimes in the gap that says that I'm going to make sure that what could have happened to you doesn't happen to you because I'm going to stand in the way and guess what? When it doesn't come to a man or a woman, God will send an angel to encamp around you and make sure he shields you from what could have killed you. Slap somebody father and say, he protected me. Lord, have mercy. He protected me. 